Hello and welcome back to my interview with Professor Jeffrey Parker, the author of the book Platform Revolution. I am Gustavo Caricone, the founder of uh, StartupSpace.io and uh, we are a platform accelerator program for multi-sided uh, markets and platforms. And on part one of this uh, interview, I spoke with Professor Parker about the differences from a pipeline business model to a platform business model and why the platforms are so powerful. On part two of my interview, you will see uh, I ask questions about uh, how important it is to create interactions on the platform, to facilitate those interactions and not so important to design and add extra features all the time to your platform. And now on part three, we are going to discuss about a very pressing issue for everyone trying to create a digital or multi-sided marketplace platform, which is launch strategies. How to solve the chicken or the egg problem. On a multi-sided market, usually they start with two sides, producers and consumers. And the platform owner, the platform orchestrator is the one responsible for the infrastructure that will connect both sides. But to start with, when you don't have consumers or producers, how to attract the first side of the market because the other side will come usually because they are interested in transacting with another player. And uh, it's always a challenge because in the beginning you have nothing. So Jeff, you have seen uh, many platforms being launched and you also uh, led projects uh, related to that and launched so many platforms. Uh, what are the strategies that work most? What can you uh, say to the startups and entrepreneurs that are really struggling to initiate a multi-sided platform? So, you know, launch is, I think, one of the biggest challenges um, that firms face in general and platforms in particular. Um, probably the easiest launch strategy is where you can launch as a pipeline. Basically, you've got a value proposition, you control all of the inputs, and you find a sales channel, you sell to customers, and they buy your product or service. Great. Um, then you can start to work out some of the core value proposition, what is it that they like, um, and, and that works. Uh, and then over time, you might open that system up to become a platform and allow additional parties to produce using your platform resources and to get access to your customers. And that's how you would transition. So we would call that a one-sided launch strategy where you, you launch just with the customer side um, and then you don't worry so much um, about the producer side because you're just doing that. And you can see the reverse. If you take something like Open Table, they launched with the producer side, so the restaurants. And then they provided reservation management systems and uh, analytics tools that were cloud-based. And only once they had a lot of restaurants on board and a critical mass did they open it up to allow self-serve for diners. And so those were examples of one-sided launch. Uh, other systems are a bit more challenging. And so if you think about um, something like Android. So if you look at the way they launched, they needed developers, but or else they wouldn't have any functionality. And then there would be no reason for somebody to buy an Android handset. Uh, so they ended up literally paying developers to come onto the platform in the form of contests. So they ran a number of contests within areas like productivity, communications, you know, creative entertainment, I think maybe 10, roughly. Uh, it wasn't a lot of money, maybe $5 million per contest. 
But at the end of those contests, they had a number of applications within each domain so that when customers started acquiring the system, there would, it would do something. Um, so that's sort of uh, a way of mobilizing both sides of the market is to make sure that you have supply and you have demand. Um, in Twitter would be something similar. You know, if nobody has created a tweet, then nobody's going to bother logging onto the system to read a tweet because there are no tweets. And so that was one of the more complex launches because you had to launch it simultaneously. You had to get producers of tweets and readers of tweets at exactly the same time. And that's probably the most complex launch strategy because in that case, you've got to get everybody on board simultaneously. So it really depends. If you can work out a, a process where you can create a value proposition for a customer without having to rely on your ecosystem, that's easier. But then you'll face the scaling problem, which is in the long run, you won't scale. And that's when you might open up to the ecosystem who can then come on, extend the system, add value. So even if you are a pipeline, it's worth thinking through, well, what are my data models? Ultimately, what are my interfaces? Is my technology modular? How would an outside ecosystem partner use this technology that I'm developing um, if I were to make it available to them? Because ultimately, you might. How important it is for, for startups and uh, multi-sided platforms to launch on a small uh, market uh, and uh, know uh, a lot about the pain they're trying to solve on that particular market. Is it uh, easier to launch in a small geography than uh, starting with a global launching strategy to a wider and much bigger it's market? It's much better if you can find a small protected space um, to work out your business model because you don't know what you don't know. I mean, you need a, a protected space. It's, it's sort of the fallacy of the big market, which says, ah, if I get just 1% of a big market, then I'm a rich man. And the answer is, if you're going against a giant competitor, you're not getting 1%, you're getting zero. Because you've got a big, full, fully scaled, giant machine that you're trying to compete against. It's much better to find a niche something that's local, has customs, language barriers, there's something unique about the setting, and build there small, where you can work out the business model, work out how you would have ecosystem partners come, add value, and then you can start to build out to adjacent markets. So would, uh, only the very largest firms on planet Earth should think about launching globally and even they would struggle you know to give you an example you know when uber was was going they always went city by city it made no sense to go globally you might have a rider in iowa but that does somebody in new york or dubai no good so you have to go dubai and i've got to get some drivers and then i'll open it up to riders and then more drivers will become because of more riders and then i move to an adjacent market so even global systems often have very local markets. How do you see the opportunities and trends on the platform arena? And uh, we're, every year we're, we're seeing new technologies being discovered and that's natural, this is going to happen uh, even faster from, from now on. So we have uh, blockchain, AI, machine learning, uh, VR, uh, augmented reality, whatever. What are the opportunities and uh, how can the platforms use all this technology to create marketplaces? I mean, a couple of them come to mind. I think you know, people talk a lot about blockchain. Uh, we haven't really seen um, a lot come from that yet, but there's still promise. Uh, some people think plat that uh, blockchain will sort of displace platforms. I tend not to believe that because I think the platform still helps sort of match supply and demand and internalize network effects in ways that just some distributed ledger contracting would have a hard time matching. Um, but I do think that that technology 
offers the opportunity to reduce costs um, and some of the transaction costs. And we wrote about uh, an example recently, uh, say in the logistics industry. Um, there's a little Harvard Business Review blog that you can see um, that should be accessible. Uh, the other technology I think that is about to come out is, is sort of much higher bandwidth telecommunications. So we're used to reasonably good internet um, with our LTE sort of 5G or long-term evolution. Uh, now we're going to have a technology that has much lower uh, latency, which means you know, one or two milliseconds of response instead of 10 to 100. And so that'll allow more real-time interaction and much higher bandwidth. So this notion of persistent network connectivity is going to extend to a broader range of devices, places. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity in aggregating the data from ever more instrumented things and then figuring out how do you learn from that? You know, what sorts of artificial intelligence, what predictive models, you know, what business models can I build around that? But I think that's where technology is going to end up creating opportunities that we don't see today. So platforms, uh, orchestrators, startups trying to create um, multi-sided markets, they usually, they have to deal with a huge amount of data. And uh, the data is really necessary to keep track of the transaction. So every transaction, is a piece of data that can be used to add value to the platform, to add value to the way the platform connects and facilitates the next transaction. So what are the tips, what, is, what are the challenges and the tips that you would give um, to the entrepreneurs trying to uh, make sense of this huge amount of data and um, grow even more their platforms? Yeah, so I think I, 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 think I would say, um, rather than trying to, to work with enormous data sets immediately, that I would do a lot of sampling and try to do random samples, work on smaller data sets, um, figure out my artificial intelligence, figure out my predictive models, and then start adding larger data sets to see the degree to which the performance of my algorithms improves. And at some point, depending on the setting, they're likely to even out. So you might go up, 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 but then things will flatten out. And at that point, you've kind of hit the diminishing returns to scale. Um, but in order to, to know, you have to have some assessment. You have to have some metrics that you assess by. So what performance? Are you trying to do accuracy? Um, are you trying to uh, do retention predictions? Uh, you know, what is it that you're trying to accomplish with your AI or with your machine learning? Um, and then keep an eye on how much more data do you need? And the data might not purely be the structured data. There might be a lot of opportunity in unstructured data um, that you could add that might be relatively sparse, but would be very different than just saying, oh, well, instead of a million observations, I have a billion. I have a thousand times as much data. Maybe, well, maybe that matters, maybe it doesn't. But if I had some kind of interesting structural data or I had some social network data or something else, that might have more power when combined with observations. So I, I, I would say be sort of open-minded about the types of information that you're going to use. Thank you, Professor Jeffrey Parker, for your time. And uh, if you would like to tell people where can they go to know more about uh, the work you have been developing with uh, platforms? Sure. So we, we have a website. Um, it's platformstrategypartners.com. Uh, for our corporate engagements, we run a big uh, MIT Platform Strategy Summit, and that's at platforms.mit.edu. And so that has presentations and the video of our meetings over the last several years. And we also do an annual report on the state of the of 
sort of the state of the world and platforms. Uh, and if you're sort of interested in, in cutting edge research, uh, we run a summer research symposium and all the papers are available at platforms.bu.edu. So there's a, a lot of uh, information out there and we're happy to share. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you so much. Good luck, everyone. I hope you enjoy my interview with uh, Jeffrey Parker, the author of uh, Platform Revolution, which is one of the books that we use to design our program. Startup Space is an accelerated program designed to help multi-sided platforms and marketplace to achieve critical mass in a record time. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.